ISIS has uh, essentially has the power to take on any kind of like oppressive regime, which is essentially the Western countries and the developed countries like America and European countries. We tell you that this idea that since they have the guns, the manpower, etc., to take the people, to take these regimes down, this kind of idea is continuously spread by the ISIS using the internet. Let me tell you that this is essentially harmful in, harmful in a scenario wherein we are trying to like, spread this idea. To, Spread this idea as like rational people that the, what the ISIS is doing is essentially bad, that you must not fall into the trap that has been set by the ISIS and go ahead and like, join them. Right? We further tell you that this internet is used by ISIS for recruitment purposes. Right? And how does this happen? We tell you that the connection between the people who belong to the ISIS and people who live elsewhere in the world is through essentially the internet. Right? We further tell you that information such as how to reach the occupied areas, information, uh, information as to like how to make the provision to like, leave these two areas and sustain themselves in like a, in, like, a troubled world. Other parts of the world are essentially like scrutinizing every single move is essentially done by the internet. And we tell you that we need to attack these people at the base of their communication itself, which is the internet. And we further tell you that the ISIS essentially goes about recruitment in like three ways, right? Number one, by overemphasizing the idea that they are doing the good work of God, right? The idea of jihad that ISIS spreads, which is essentially that we are essentially ones who are the messengers of Allah in like the modern context, that the Western parts are essentially like demeaned, like demeaned and discouraged, like Islam, and hence we must gain our like rightful. Is bad is is by bad and essentially we are doing the work of God by making him great again. Okay? We tell you this idea is continuously spread by the ISIS. The second way is to provide like the option of will. Right? The ISIS provides this idea that like if you join us and like if you do our our work, then you essentially are, are like in an adventure adventure in your way, which is essentially that attracts like the primitive primitive like instincts of human beings. Right? We tell you that this idea of will that the ISIS provides is something that is done through the internet. And the third idea of how they spread hate against Western countries, right? and here is here is here is where the third perspective of like the, the idea of the ISIS to create like a polarized world by means of propaganda and fear comes to right? We tell you that the idea that the ISIS essentially masquerades within the internet uh, through the internet by being organizations that spreading hate against the Muslims themselves in Western countries by essentially ensuring that the other people who do not belong to Islam hate Muslims. Right? We tell you what does this result in? We tell you that this essentially results in the idea that Muslims themselves will get reactionary and understand that Western countries do not love you as much as they love their other citizens. Right? We tell you that this idea of Islamophobia that is spread across this across the particular areas by causing like anti-Western country propaganda as the same like anti-Muslim like propaganda also. We tell you this happens mainly through the internet through the source of the internet and we tell you that this is essentially bad right? and by we tell you that if Islamophobia is unleashed in the world through the means that ISIS is occupying right now we tell you that ISIS is strengthened because more and more people now want to join the ISIS to change this idea that ISIS is like so to do the good work of God and we tell you that this is essentially bad for the world which is because we also tell you that how ISIS uses the internet is through the means of like through means like or like through like logistical means right we tell you that usage of like tools such as Google Maps usage of tools such as like net banking usage of like net banking for ISIS Smuggling of like guns, of like drugs, etc., or smuggling drugs out of the like, ISIS controlled areas, etc., essentially happens through the internet, right? And we, and we tell you that this is essentially something that is being that is essentially profiteering the ISIS and essentially facilitating their activities of like expanding their influence and gaining more and more control over the territories in the Middle East. And we tell you that we have to stop them, right? And we tell you why is it so that cutting off internet access in these areas so, will help us achieve it later. By the way, the cutting of internet access essentially helps us do this, right? Mr. Speaker, we tell you that, as I as said in my context, the environment that is created by the ISIS is such that any kind of activity in, in aforementioned manners is essentially one that profits the ISIS, that the ISIS will never take stop, right? We essentially tell you that the idea that the internet is available only to people who belong to the ISIS structure of us and not to the common people in those occupied areas is very important, right? We tell you that when these people in positions of power essentially go ahead and take use internet banking to like smuggle items etc. We tell you that there is no kind of scrutiny that is done for these kind of activities. On the other hand, and why do we tell you that this kind of activity, this kind of motion must be passed essentially in ISIS occupied areas? Right? We so, tell you in other parts of the world. Yeah. How will ISIS react to a potential form of propaganda being banned in India? Mr. Speaker, we tell you that the idea that the Western countries are essentially against the ISIS already exists in status quo, right? We tell you that this kind of like weird incentive that ISIS will gain like, oh my god, the world hates us more now, exists in status quo, and we tell you that this is essentially going to help us in the fight against the ISIS, right? We further tell you that why is it so that why specifically the ISIS occupied areas, right? We tell you that other areas, whether these kind of propaganda activities can occur, and this is what side opposition will come and talk about, we tell you that there exists scrutiny of individual activities, right? We tell you that when a person in like India sits and tries to recruit and the people from Canada and Andhra Pradesh do want to go and join ISIS. We tell you that there is scrutiny by like the state police and cyber crime forces. Right? We tell you that 
we have an argument about when they come here and tell us like, how will we then know about like what is the problem of like the people living in this area, how will the reporters work, etc. Right? We tell you that all these arguments are counted on two grounds. But on the idea of reporters, we tell you that the coverage that we require again in the propaganda against the ISIS in other countries of the world so that mobilization could happen on like military levels, on like on economic levels, etc. We tell you that this has already happened in state of space. We know that ISIS is something that the world has to act against, right? On the idea of how will we know about the problems that the people we tell you that the idea that the, we know of the refugee crisis is not because of the internet but because the refugees came into Europe, right? Yeah. We tell you this is something the DPM will speak more about and for all these reasons.
question is having a complete ignorance of what the what ICC is and how it operates. Right? According to that, ICC is exactly like any other terrorist organization which is working on the same principles and with the same like methodology that any other terrorist organization imposes. Right? Except that's not how ICC works. It promotes itself to be a state, right? As a legitimate state, and many people in those areas actually accept them as the legitimate state because of what I have just told you. That they say that you know what we give you hospitals which like your older repressive regimes are not able to. We give like only men education, whereas the older repressive regimes wanted all women also to have education, which is essentially a bad thing according to Islam. Mr. Speaker, we tell you that when ISIS acts like a state, then you need to necessarily examine what the utility of the utility of the internet to ISIS is, right? We and they say that you know what ISIS will become stronger in the ignorance of fact that how ISIS has become strong already and how it will continue to do so with internet, right? We tell you that the utility of internet to ISIS is propaganda, which is one, but I'll come to that later in my speech. But it is also about the logistical support which internet is providing them by right that the fact that they can carry out bank transactions, the fact that they can like plot maps on Google Maps and see like how to attack and all that shit. We tell you that in any sort of modern warfare, the logistical support which internet provides to the people on the ground, the fighters on the ground, the local ISIS commanders is immense, right? We tell you that the manner in which ISIS have been able to fight people is by knowing like where to attack and how to attack and having like the funds to do so, which is done through net banking. We tell you the moment you receive like you remove all these logistical support which ISIS has through the internet, they automatically grow weak, right? So we tell you that their ability to have further physical expansion is something which is greatly reduced. Mr. Speaker, now what are some serious rebuttals that we have to then raise, right? The fact that suddenly propaganda against ISIS is something which will get diminished. We have, we have huge opposition to that on multiple grounds. One, the people in like these uh, areas who are anti-ISIS, who believe that ISIS is doing them wrong, don't have internet access anyways, right? Because then if the area is controlled by the ISIS, which is like the policy state has acts as such, why will the Islamic state allow people to have like broadband or Wi-Fi access in under that under the territories which are under their control in the first place? Mr. So we tell you that the people in these areas who are generally negative, like who generally are affected by this sort of like atrocities that ISIS carries out don't have the access to internet in the first place. And what sort of propaganda are you trying to like stop? I have no idea. This is because another rebuttal, right? The fact that like now people who suddenly think that oh, this was is not happening, which is false, right? Refugee crisis will still exist. People will still go from and the fact is why will they go from Syria to like uh, European countries if they don't feel that like Europe will welcome them? This is because it's not happening in the vacuum. The Syrian crisis and the ISIS crisis has existed for about five years. People already know that refugees are being taken in by the European countries. People already know that we have aid in other places. So it is an extreme ignorance of facts to come and say that today if you block internet, people will suddenly feel that they are in welcome. Without any analysis, I think it's extremely ridiculous. This, what happens when the tech heads are in different countries and they can still propagate information? Again, an ignorance of what I just explicitly told you. It's extremely hard for a person sitting in Bangalore and Hyderabad to ensure that this sort of a discourse happens on the internet. Two days back, for someone in Kerala was arrested for only sympathizing with ISIS, fast spreading propaganda. He was arrested for only sympathizing and having very pro ISIS views. This is because we tell you that in such extreme circumstances, when the world already knows what sort of an exigency of a situation you already exist in, why is it that countries, countries including like, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, which follow the same sort of Hamas ideologies, which ISIS, like, you know, roots itself in, even these are countries which are blocking any sort of pro ISIS sentiments from prospering in their own country in the first place. We tell you that it is extremely hard for a tech head in Bangalore and Hyderabad to, like, you know, uh, to spread any sort of propaganda. On a, like, on a more even fundamentally practical level, right, this idea of spreading like fear through beheading videos. How is it that this tech heads who are in other places of the world get the video in the first place, right? They get it through in the net. We tell you that all sorts of information which people in the other places of the world are also propagating is by having access, by, by like, you know, by people who have access to the internet in the ISIS controlled areas in the first place. Mr. Speaker, now this Islamophobia, right? This question of Islamophobia which is skirted around by saying Islamophobia was spread in some ridiculous way that like, you know, now suddenly people will think that people don't care about their Islam. That is not how it works, Mr. Speaker. So we tell you the fact that European countries, Germany and Canada are still accepting refugees who are Muslim and trying to rehabilitate them shows to the world that you know like your state is not against Islam, it is welcoming Islam and the fact that Donald Trump is getting such sort of opposition from within the United States because of the like, Islamophobic comments already means that there is an existing counter narrative already in the countries which shows you that no, your states are not Islamophobic. So just saying that cutting of internet to like, you know, this 
propagators of terrorism makes you suddenly Islamophobic is something which I can't fathom. Mr. Sheila, now what have we come out and told you after having destroyed their case rights? How ISIS uses the internet, right? Primary reason that ISIS uses the internet is one, by ensuring that its propaganda goes out and it recruits more people. Why is it that people from other places than this geographical extent that they are talking about? Why is it that people from Europe who are like literate and shit, these people go and join ISIS? Because A, they know how to join ISIS, which is just by the way through the internet, and B, by the fact that they are being indoctrinated by extremist ideas which exist on the internet through the propagators of ISIS within these like Islamic territories. It's a thing I tell you that this sort of like, this sort of uh, recruitment process that ISIS carries out through the internet is something to stop in case they don't have access to the internet. This is because second, the act of Islamophobia house. ISIS is an organization which wants the world to be polarized in two settings. A Muslims, B everyone else, right? Yes. How does the ISIS react when it feels second? It doesn't give a fuck, it already hates you as much as it possibly can. I don't know why ISIS to more when they don't want it, they went to go and give them internet because they already hate you because you're dropping bombs on them. Just to know we tell you that saying that ISIS will hate you more is again a very ridiculous class just to repeat it twice, right? In the base period. This is even on the idea of Islamophobia. ISIS he wants to ensure that people in the world think that they everyone is against Muslims and Muslims are being slaughtered. We tell you the way they do that is by showing to the world that look how we treat non-Muslims here, right? So now what happens is that like staying in America, if my like neighbor is a uh, is a Muslim, right? I believe that this guy also has the visibility of the internet is something which is very important. So this idea of beheading video, the moment I see the video of beheading, I believe that my neighbor who is a Muslim is also someone who can or will do something of that sort. This is because we tell you that this lets you have lets that gives ISIS the successful plan of spreading the polarized situation that they want to be in. And we tell you that ISIS loves the fact that there is Islamophobia, right? Because it lets them recruit more people. This is because what have we told you is the most important way which the ISIS is the logistical loses which you completely block and block that territorial expansion which is like their only primary concern and not the ideological expansion which they seem to completely ignore and hence I am very very proud to propose this motion.
for the room, right? We think that if extending this light to the planet, this isolation, by removing the internet, has two consequences, right? One, the ability for that isolation to be, pretty, to be even slightly counter, like dramatically goes down, right? Because in this particular situation, you are not going to have any ability to inject a counter narrative. Right? This is crucial, right? Because we think the internet, because of how dynamic it is, always has the propensity for change and radical change, right? And this is crucial because if the ISIS can use it in that way, we think we can counter it in that way too, right? This is it. This is where our characterization of the internet as a dynamic organism, right? Not as something static, which is controlled by ISIS, where all information goes through it, and then suddenly, you know, everybody is just static like that. We think that there is a real propensity for dynamism to enter this conflict, and therefore, for a solution to this conflict to be sort of ingrained within the minds of people, at least for small extent, we sit down, right? And we think, thirdly, right? And this is the right, like, this is, I mean, like, they were talking about how the ISIS were not even grant internet to people, like, obviously, but they do grant internet to people because they spread their propaganda, because they believe that they are going to be right? We think, as long as the facility exists for us, we can have a smidgen of hope to ingrain a topic that we think we don't be utilized, right? Because if the ISIS thinks that it's doing a good thing by giving people internet access, we're going to show them that you can, that you can potentially shoot yourself in the foot. And this is why we think that the internet is an important, like, measure in countering the ISIS, both ideologically and physically, right? Because, again, what happens, right? As we have spoken, State expansion, right? Now the ICC itself as a state, right? We think the way in which it perceives itself is different from the Al Qaeda, is different from the Taliban, right? Because it aims to create a legitimate state structure. But the difference between ISIS and any other state is that it aims to create it on a hypocritical basis. I mean, that hypocritical basis can be exposed. Why? Because under their model, they say, you know, the ISIS guys are the schools, hospitals, nunneries, so on and so on, right? We think that the hypocritical nature of this is especially exemplified when they also go and hold brothel religious rape women in order to release videos of it, make them go to like, make them like, we're popping and shaking them, we had them so on and so forth, right? This hypocrisy is something that can be manipulated, right? And hypocrisy is something people see properly enough. I mean, think that we can inject a narrative or a counter narrative to this particular hypocrisy by using the internet, even if the ISIS is giving us that access, and we think that's even greater. Because now people understand that the ISIS is a hypocritical organization that is shooting itself in the foot, and we think that's a major advantage to the local populace, which is otherwise isolated, right? I and mean, we think it's isolated physically, because obviously it's in the they're in the conflict zone, but also isolated ideologically, ideologically can take over the internet, right? And we think that the sense of isolation is exactly exponentially in their case, right? And why is this exactly an exponential? Because as we have to right, the width and breadth of information we get on the internet can exponentially change and it's also huge in nature and the volume is absolutely massive. Therefore, this exponential nature of change in volume, we think, is a catalyzing factor that we can use in order to manipulate the narrative that the ISIS is trying to put within people's mind, right? And we think that we can prove to people who are isolated, who believe that they do not have options for it to say counter the refugee crisis, to necessarily go ahead and make a change, right? And because we think that people won't know that you can travel to, uh, like, to Germany or to Turkey or whatever if you do not have the influence, give them that information, which at least has a smidgen of chance of giving them that information, right? We think that we win this debate because of the master benefit of being able to at least inject a sense of counter narrative, right? In this particular situation, you know, I think I have a question, sorry. Yeah, so I believe that there is a we don't think that it's just suddenly going to stop with this, but we think that there is a chance, and that's crucial, right? Because if we does sympathize with ISIS and to remove the internet from that particular data, we think the ISIS is going to resort to higher measures of brutality, higher measures of, say, raping women, killing men, so on and so forth, higher measures of destroying hospitals and including increasing the civilian bloodshed in that conflict, and therefore isolate people more, right? And we think that the, the, that the ISIS will be able to manipulate the, the pattern of internet access in a manner in which it is not it is able to hide its hypocrisy, B, not allow any ideological counter to enter, and C, not allow basic amenity for people who have information to the fact that they can escape this conflict, right? We also think this is a question of individual rights, as they get up to it, right? That individual rights in terms of escaping a conflict also have access to information that allows you to escape a conflict zone as it would be under any UN convention is completely, completely barred of rights. I think that this is crucial, right? So, as a resident of an of occupied area, as a resident of an area which is where people are constantly trying to rape your wife and go behead your husband or whatever, right? We think that the ability to access information and escape a conflict zone is something that we should, that is guaranteed, right? And especially under the Geneva Convention, where you isolate conflict and conflict, the conflict between areas from people who are likely to be civilian casualties to that conflict. So therefore, individual, community, and religious zones are very, very powerful.
other parts of the world through which they create this propaganda. Except we tell you that these ISIS controlled areas are the areas from where the real power of ISIS stems because these are the consolidated areas of ISIS, right? We think that this is the power center of the ISIS and the very reason you need to prioritize and make the magic of this debate is that we need to weaken ISIS in the status quo because the best way to attack ISIS in all of these controlled areas is to sort of attack them, weaken them, take away their power. Because the one essential question in this debate is what is the nature of these ISIS controlled areas, right? We think that ISIS functions in a manner where they consolidate their power in two ways. They make a simple logical jump where they say that internet is available to everyone except we say that ISIS functions in a manner where A, because of the infrastructure and technological incapabilities that they've created in all of these consolidated areas, oh, yeah. internet is not access, accessible to each and every one. Secondly, we told you, and they haven't clashed with it, as to how and what is the nature of ISIS functioning. They sort of create this narrative as we are the state and we function for your positives and we would want to make your lives better with the ideological narrative that they run, right? We do not think that when they come here and tell us that there is a minute fraction of counter narratives being run, we tell you that fraction of counter narrative is something that one that we are trading off by making the ISIS far stronger. Because when we tell you that the very reason ISIS functions in these consolidated areas is the siphoning of funds that they get from the various other power centers that they have. The way in which they control all of these power centers existing throughout the globe is the way in which they communicate this, right? And that is why we believe that this contact power is something which is very integral to the ISIS because that is something which makes it the most, you know, villainous thing in the 21st century because the way that they have penetrated in the remaining parts of the globe. We are not trading off, we are not making this localized. Except we tell you that we are ready to trade off that minute fraction of counter narrative by weakening the ISIS because we know that the counter narrative is something which will necessarily be subverted and suppressed. Except we think that the way to go about it is to bring and act as an external agent, weaken them from outside because the very moment you weaken them from outside, that is where you attack them the most and in the best possible way, right? One is this power of contact power, right? We think the way in which ISIS functions. One, on the level of propaganda that they create, the fear and instilling and the propaganda because their notion and their idea about expansion doesn't, doesn't restrict sure. itself to the localized level of their consolidated power. They want to continuously expand and for continuously expanding, they need this power of internet in the 21st century to tell everyone about their ideology, to sort of communicate their agenda, to make them ideologically instill the fear as to we are attacking the Western liberal democracies and we can expand and we can do that. Secondly, on the contact power, we think that both military level and the way in which Google Maps are used, the way in which economic funds are siphoned, because I, the smugglers and all of these things which are charged, which are present in different parts of the globe, are essentially one of the major agents through which ISIS sort of functions, right? Because we do not think ISIS functions in isolation. ISIS has this one connect things to all of these remaining divine agents and divine power centers throughout the globe. The very moment you cut off this contact power, you isolate ISIS and that is where you attack them and beat them the most, right? Secondly, we come to this idea of what they, what they talk about is how ISIS will react to it. Except we don't think that's even relevant in this way. We think ISIS is this radical organization which doesn't give shit about anything in this world, which sole agenda is to sort of function against human resources, right? And the humanity, right? Then they come here and tell us that there is a sort of brutality within these localized areas and problems exist. We think that ISIS has consolidated and sort of manipulated all of these people where this raping of women and brothels is something because the way in which they use these consolidated areas is through direct contact, right? Because the way in all of these consolidated areas, these ISIS agents move through, through these guns and fear is instilled in the localized manner, right? We don't think internet is used as much in these consolidated areas as it's used in the remaining part of the globe because in these consolidated areas, they have the military power, they have the economic base and they have this ideological base to spread it in these localized areas. Sure. Right? Your question. After the internet has been banned there, if they, if they give more people to more and more more fear, how will the world react? How will the world react? I mean, that's the way the world is supposed to react by telling them that yes, even if you have the consolidated areas, because we can't into, you cannot say that the United States can suddenly penetrate into the ISIS consolidated areas and create a change, right? That's a very utopian idea without telling us as to how these social social circles that have been formed by ISIS, been manipulated by ISIS, will suddenly any agent from outside will enter it and make a change, right? We don't think that will happen except some form of analysis should have come to decide as to how suddenly they will penetrate 
into all of these layers of like social and social, religious and sectarian conflicts that ISIS has created that will not happen. Right? Secondly, we think that the metric to judge us today is to be on which side of the house are we more able to weaken ISIS, yeah. more yeah. able to make it like make it more like subservient to the Western liberal democracies because we think that the way ISIS is functioning and is expanding is sort of sees that it can tackle everyone, right? It can tackle even the Western liberal democracies because it's power just for us in the way it functions in all of these but also in all of these varying parts, right? We think the way in any terrorist organization functions is the fear of propaganda, right? We think when you talk about this panel or tech being an ID, that the very reason why it was able to set up all of these remaining factions that are Bangalore, like center of power from where they could do, was the reason because they had access of power, they had the access of internet, they had the access of communication, which they diverted and used in time to make and all of use all of these ideas out of the place, right? Secondly, we think that the narration of the they haven't even clashed with any idea as to what is the nature of these consolidated entities. There's absolutely no clash in the department from their side. And the only thing that we get is let's just be or let's just give a chance to counter narrative. Except we say that this counter narrative has been trying to come for the last two decades. It hasn't done any impact. It will not because the sort of power and control that ISIS has from the top down is that every time a counter narrative is going to run, then every time it will be suppressed, right? We don't think you can make this debate about counter narratives. At the end of this debate, I can only ask you to make certain three metrics for to ask this debate. One, what is the nature of ISIS? Because if you let continue ISIS functioning in the manner as it goes on in the status quo, you do not attack it, you just let it be as it is, you do not attack it in its source. Secondly, the idea of the consolidated power which we have to and our side as much.
outside of the network expansion and so we tell you because they're so globally indexed no matter what happens even if you reduce that internet capacity in the particular territorial specific zone we tell you that the ability to get that information out will remain for other means and because they're globally indexed they will sit there on a global scale use the internet and to spread the idea like so tell you on both points like the yeah. other
Second, how does ISIS use the internet? And thirdly, the idea of discourse which happens, right? So, first one, who is internet available to? Even they considered, and we have told you from the first week itself, that either it is like your ISIS commanders who like who can't perform any risk to any sort of discourse, or it is like as they said, considered in their second week, and I quote, marginal benefit of having like you know internet access to a few people, handful of people. Sort of videos and these sort of fake speeches are something which not be which will not be available to anyone. The moment it's 